The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this outside in my painting box and I'm going to spray the inside of the pot because terracotta pots are very porous and I don't want the water from watering to come through onto the other side. So I'm going to spray the top edge and the hole inside. And I'm just using 123 Primer. This is my bullseye and it is for interior and exterior. You could also just paint it with a brush with your acrylic paint as well. The drain tray already has a nice glossed finish, but it's not finished, of course, on the edge and on the bottom. I'm going to be painting the edge of this as well, and I'm just putting little pieces of masking tape around the edge here because I don't want it coming into that nice glossed finish that's already complete. I don't want globs of paint on this edge that's going to be sitting on the table. So just another scrap piece of paper, and you can just take your um, nail and just crease around, and it'll give you a guide on where to cut your piece of paper. And just go around with small pieces of masking tape just to protect that edge so you don't get paint on that flat edge that you want to have it sitting on the table. You don't want all that bumps. You don't want to have to clean it off afterwards. So this will keep a nice clean edge for you. And I would do the same for your main pot because this edge is going to be sitting on the drain tray and you want it to sit nice and level, not be bumping all around. Thirty minutes drying time to add your top coat so I can just take off my masking tape now and then you can paint the rest of the sides. For my painting area I'm going to use a Lazy Susan for ease of videotaping and for painting. And I have covered a piece of foam board with a piece or pieces of freezer paper, the waxy side out. On top of that, I'm going to place a paint can full of paint. It's only because it's nice and heavy and it'll keep it nice and stable. And on goes my pot. So we've got some drip space so this isn't sitting right on the surface of the freezer paper. Now the reason I used freezer paper in the beginning was so I could save any paint that drips down and use that for acrylic skins afterwards. But then I thought, I don't know, what if I put some tile underneath? Maybe I might get some pretty neat little designs coming onto the tiles and I can use that for some artwork. This is an experiment, I haven't done this before, so let's see if it works. Decide what color theme you want. And because I'm putting these succulents in and it's going outside on my deck, which is a lot of gray and there's a lot of teal and turquoisey bluey colors. So therefore I want to add in some of the teal and turquoise. I'm going to be adding in the gray, a little bit of pink to pick up this. And right now I'm going to show you how I mix my paints because I want to bring in some sage green or maybe like a gray kind of green color. I just use the paint I have on hand. And for this particular color of green, I'm going to be using the Liquitex gray silver actually. And I'm going to pop in some hunter green and leaf green from Deco Art. I like to use these squeeze bottles that I get from the dollar store because they have the measurements on them. I have added three fluid ounces of Floetrol. And then I start adding my color to get the color that I want. And I'm just going to squish in some of the silver. And I'm just going to keep adding color until, as I say, I've got the color I want. That's how much silver paint I've put in. I'm not going to measure it exactly. I'm just kind of going by trial and error here until I get the color that is desired. This is all plugged up because it is on the old side. Just a titch of this one. I'm just going to give that a shake up and see what I've got for color. 
and that's what I've got right now. A pretty color, but I do want it dark. So I'm going to add some more of my darker green. And that's the color I've got right now. And it kind of complements all of my plants. So I'm going to stay with that green. The next thing you need to do is you need to thin your paint until it runs off your stick. You can see right now it is really thick. So I'm going to just add some regular tap water adding just a little bit at a time. Give it a stir and keep checking until you've got the consistency where it's just dripping off like a thin pancake batter. And let's see what we've got. It's not a complete stream, so I'm just gonna add just a titch more water. These are colors I don't usually put together. So what I'm going to do is make a really tiny dirty pour and then I can get an idea if I like it. So I have all the colors in the dirty pour and I'm gonna pour them just over onto my tile here and I'm gonna see what we have. Doing a dirty pour, it really mixes up all the colors together. So if that's the look you like, then that's great. But I'm thinking it's looking a little bit too crazy and muddy. So I'm going to put on the colors separately. working on making sure that these little top sections up here are covered. going from the bottom up so I can fill in the bottom here and then just joining it up. If it does some funny little things on the top, even better. As to the design. I was originally thinking I was going to leave some of the terracotta open, but I've decided just to come in with some nice dark orangey color instead. We'll let the strip a bit more and now I can also do my saucer. And same thing, just paint all the way around. And I've matched up the tray to go with the pot. Same color scheme. And you've probably been wondering What's going on with these tiles? That was the one I poured the sample paint on, and this is what stripped off onto the other tiles. So I'm just going to grab some of this excess paint that's flowed over the edge here and add it to the tile. And I'll need more paint in here to get this to flow into it. So let's go back to our tubes of paint here. And I'll flood the bottom of this tile with some silver. And to save on the paint, I'm going to put this tile down and then it, let it flow down onto this other tile below. So 
I've got a little piece on the other side here that's not right there that isn't filled in. There we go. Okay, we'll set that aside. Good way to save your paint. And I'm going to flood this one down here with some turquoise. Sorry, the camera was just out of focus. I just added the uh, turquoise down on the bottom here. And this time, just for something different, I've wet a paper towel and we're going to do a swipe and let's see what happens. And that's tile number two coming up with some fun little cells. Here's tile number three. And I'm just going to bring this down a little bit off of the freezer paper. And I'm gonna drop a few little more drops up in the top here. And again, coming in with the paper towel. And this time I'm gonna swipe from corner to corner. So coming up to the blue here, letting it to sit down and pull across. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a jiggle here to get up into that other corner there. Now this is the beauty of swipes. I like what's kind of going on down here, but not right here. So I'm just going to bring up some more paint in there. And then going to bring it down again. Just with that little corner and just swipe down again. And I'll just let that sit to work. It's magic. I'm loving these swipes, so I'm going to just keep swiping. And I'm just going to fill in my excess tile with more turquoise because it's my favorite color. I'm just spreading it out to aid with it getting off to the sides here. And I'm just going to add a little bit more of the rust here and there, little drops here and there. And here we go with another swipe with wet, damp paper towel. and let it work its magic. Now, if you're really digging your tiles, then carefully pick them up and place it on anything that will elevate it. I just happen to have some paint cans here. So I'm just gonna pop it on there and then I can go around and clean up the sides. And just taking a paintbrush and just Bring it down on the sides so it's covered all the way around. So make it look nice and tidy. I'm not particularly thrilled with this swipe as the paint has stopped here and there's no paint down in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull through again and I'm gonna do another swipe. This time I'm gonna come up with my rust or whatever color you wanna call that come in again with my damp paper towel, damp paper towel, damp, <laughs> damp paper towel, lay it in there and away we go again. Mm -hmm. 
And let's see what we get that time. It's the fun part about art. Every time you do something, it's always different. Here's the four tiles that we managed to make from all that extra paint that we didn't waste. This is the one where we swiped it twice. Here's our first one with no swipe at all. And that one. And there's another one. We'll let those continue to dry overnight or maybe for a couple days, and then we will seal them up, put some little pads on the bottom, and we've got some beautiful coasters. You can remove your masking tape before it's totally dry. We've got a nice clean edge. And the same with your top pot. Now, you have two options. You can see how the paint has dripped into little bubbles on the end. Now that could add as a quite fun effect or you want to turn it around and smooth it out. Just be really careful when you go to transfer this over. So I'm just going to feel up inside here and get it to come off this can without touching my rim. And then flip it over to the other side on top of my paint tin. So here's the top side of the drain tray. And you can see where it's just flowing into the white edge that we painted earlier on the spray paint. And I kind of like this. I think it looks really arty. So you can leave it like that, or you can take your paintbrush and smooth it out till it's all into the white. So for your other option, here's a big little bump of green. So if you really wanted to, you could just squish it down and push it up into the white. It's up to you, whatever you like. Now, as I said, I do like the little bumps, but it's going to take a long time to dry. So what I'm going to do is just come in and just take some of the paint out so it doesn't take so long to dry. I've let my pot, saucer, and tiles dry for three days. They're nice and dry. And the only thing I would suggest is if you are going to do the tiles to save up on your paint, is just have a riser so it's above your surface. The reason being is because my paint has seeped into the back, but no problem with that as I can just take it outside and then spray the back with my white primer again and that will fix that. Once the white paint has dried thoroughly, I will flip them over and take them back outside and I'm going to protect them with Krylon Low Odor Clear gloss and I'll do that on the tiles, my pot and the saucer. I let these all dry out in the sun for a little while and I've brought them inside now and I'll let them sit overnight and then they'll be ready to do our planter. I have lost half of my voice so no more talking. We'll keep going but I'm sure you'll figure it out. <laughs> Thanks for watching still.
The acrylic skins have dried as well, so you can just take either an X-Acto knife or I've got my palette knife here and just ease under it. Some of it might be too thin to, to come up, but that's okay. You don't need to have all of it. And then once you've got a fair chunk there, you can just take it and peel it back. An acrylic skin. Here's the top side of the acrylic skin. And then you get another fun coloring on the back side. So you can choose to use whatever side you want.